as surgeries for lymphedema and lipedema become more popular and more effective, I'm excited to do this series on surgical options that are currently available to patients. I do this with the understanding that procedures are constantly being updated, modified, changed, and improved. It's also important to mention that not every procedure is appropriate for every patient and patient selection remains critical. All options must be discussed in depth with your medical team. Today's study is entitled Comparison of the Effectiveness of Liposuction for Lower Limb versus Upper Limb Lymphedema. It's performed by Dr. Shuhei Yoshida and team from 2023. And this study continues our conversation on liposuction as this is the most frequently performed debulking procedure in lymphedema patients. The study starts by acknowledging the fact that it is already known that rigorous compression therapy is required after liposuction for severe lymphedema as a routine part of postoperative care. This particular study is looking to determine the effectiveness of upper extremity versus lower extremity procedures. 28 patients were included in this study 18 of them were lower extremity patients and 10 were upper extremity patients. Now, all patients had already undergone lymphedema surgery with either an LVA, lymphovenous anastomosis, or a VLT, vascularized lymphatic transplant procedure. Measurements were taken preoperatively with ICG, lymphocentigraphy, and tape measure. Extensive tumescent circumferential liposuction was performed from either the ankle to the hip or from the wrist to the shoulder to remove as much subcutaneous fat and fibrotic tissue as possible. Cotton compression bandages were applied following the surgery and worn continuously for seven days. The patient then wore compression for the following six months with either bandaging systems or ready to wear garments. Compression was worn continuously except for showering. In some cases, Velcro type garments were used if necessary. Now, patients were educated on self-care, including self-lymphatic drainage for this post-operative period. However, additional rehabilitation, such as manual lymphatic drainage from a CLT, was not performed. After six months, compression pressure was decreased if possible. It was found that non-compliance was significantly higher in the lower extremity groups, with six patients being non-compliant, versus the upper extremity group. No patients were non-compliant and the patients stated their reasons for non-compliance being pain in the limb or heat of the limb. Higher post-operative pressure was also noted in the lower extremities versus the upper extremities in order to maintain these good post-operative results. There was also a larger total volume of tissue removed in lower extremity patients. However, the improvement rates were significantly higher in all of the upper extremity patients in this study. This indicates that liposuction is more effective for the upper extremity, and it's believed that compression overall is easier to implement in the upper extremity lymphedema surgical patient population. Findings suggest that it may be possible to decrease compression in the limb over time, which might make compliance easier. Other findings suggest that patients with stage one lymphedema or reversible lymphedema benefit most from a physiological reconstruction procedure such as the LVA, which can reduce the risk of progression to a more chronic or advanced stage later. The authors finally recommend that reduction procedures be reserved for patients with advanced lymphedema stage two or stage three. I think this is a super important study to discuss because compliance is truly a big issue, not just before surgery, but after as well. Being patient is of utmost importance. I have seen a handful of patients who have undergone lower extremity lymphedema surgery and have had great results, but they understand that the compression is not going to go away and they have had multiple follow-ups with both their surgical team and reinforcement by me as their certified lymphedema therapist, acknowledging the fact that results take time. More details of the study can be found below, and I hope you have found this interesting and helpful. My name is Lisa Berman Silvestri. I'm a physical therapist and a certified lymphedema therapist, and my goal is to make us all lymph smart.